back out here at uh, Leslie and his dad's shop. Uh, Jacob's pretty well finished up with this exhaust. Uh, so this is that center section that's going to be, uh, that's all aluminum. Uh, it goes to, I don't remember which way is front and back. I believe it goes like this. Anyway, uh, you can see I'm holding it all up with one hand. I think he took the back section that fits right here uh, back to work. I was out of town uh, while he did the majority of this work, but I asked these guys, you know, while the car's already on the lift, I need to get in here and change out that pilot uh, bearing. So I asked and well, they were nice enough to let me. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down pipe out. Um, and then one thing that, I'm going to keep this down pipe out. Jacob needs to add a V-band in there um, after the wastegate merge. So right about in that area right there. That way this section here can get pulled out um, and I can keep the down pipe up there. Anyway, um, I'm going to probably lower this thing down, try to get as much of this undone from the top and then start with pulling this drive shaft out, get this trans out. That way I can change this pilot bushing. I forgot to tell you guys that Jacob uh, had to remake this entire charge pipe because of the turbo location. At first, I thought we were going to just, you know, modify the existing one. But as you can see, he totally remade made it. Nice, beautiful pie cuts. Uh, his welds on aluminum are just fantastic. So uh, some of the other things, I don't know if that will probably not work. It doesn't work. So we're going to have to make a new oil line, oil drain line. We also have to still put in the um, O2 bung. Uh, I was talking with uh, Troy from Panda Motor Works, and we got a good location picked out for that. And so, yeah, it's coming along, guys. Uh, I'm going to probably just set up the camera and start knocking this thing out. Just do a little time lapse. Time lapse. transmission tunnel and up up top and then since we added the uh the wastegate restart tube right there i can't get it to pull down either now i might be able to with more room but anyway i'm gonna try pulling this out get myself some more room raise the car back up and uh we'll dive back in a little bit more after that but i need a break so i really can't feel that the bearing is bad in there it does look like there's some grease clutch uh splines look halfway decent they they ride on the input shaft of that transmission fine uh, hooks look a little worn well not necessarily worn they have plenty of material left but uh they look like maybe glazed over or hot spotted flywheel and pressure plate don't appear to be hot so i am going to clean it up a little bit i am still going to change that out that bearing out for a uh a bushing and we'll just go from there all right so here is the new bronze bushing i've been uh fighting getting the uh old pilot bearing out finally got it out and now i started cleaning up so this is the new bronze bushing uh, the only dimension that's slightly longer uh it's slightly longer overall by um like 0.2 millimeters or something like that it's really not all that much and i think uh there's plenty of room inside the crank i put one of these in uh, my spare crank at home um, and you know the way it spins on the uh, right here on the trans it seems to be pretty good i'm looking it all around um, when i when i had the bearing in the crank i tried spinning it by hand it didn't seem rough or anything like that it looked pretty fine i'm starting to think it was a bleeding issue um, I, I still i can't understand it so what I'm going to try doing is getting a, uh, a speed bleeder for this. I'm, I might ask Leslie uh, if they have like a, um, you know, a power bleeder or something like that to help me out with this. I have one of these sitting in the in the refrigerator here in the garage. I'm about to go ahead and put it into the crank. Um, 
and then start whipping this thing back up. So one of the things that I fought super hard was when I was dropping the trans, this bellow was basically wedging itself against the subframe right here and between the trans. I, I hated doing this, but I ended up cutting a little slot here because typically whenever the downpipe's not in the way, um, you just tilt the back down and then kind of slide it out like this. But because it was wedged up in there, it was just kind of a royal pain in the butt. So it was easiest for me to just cut that slot. I need to fill this hole anyway. Yeah, gotta love it. It's always something. You guys might find this funny, but this is the bread trick. Um, it took a lot longer than, the, than when I tried it yesterday at home and my other crank. Just like that, new bushings in. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this clutch back on and start loading this uh, trans back onto the trans jack and we'll go up. All right, so uh, got everything back together. Without that downpipe, it went together much easier than pulling it out. I didn't have to fight with the trans as much. Now I'm doing it all by myself, which freaking sucks. Amen to that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raise this thing up, put the drive shaft back in, tighten that stuff down. Jacob needs to come. He's bringing a new argon bottle so he can finish these welds. We got to make these modifications to this and then we're pretty well finished up. 